Hey guys, how are you doing? This is, well, I'm Denise, you guys know me, Denise Wellick-Peterson from the Use Your Cycle Method Menopause Project, and with me today is Danielle from Essentially Massage. Now, I have worked with Danielle personally, and I send all of my clients that come in with, oh, I got a pain, I got a big pain, something that I can't fix with stretching, so I completely 100% trust her on whatever she's gonna tell you. But the other day in the group, I asked you, you know, do you work out? Do you not work out because you have pain, whatever? And somebody mentioned their knees. And you know, I hear knee pain is a really big deal, especially as we get older. Every time I do a workout and I put a lunge in, I get a message, hey, how about something without lunges? So today, Danielle and I talked about it the other day and she's like, hey, how about this AIS, I don't remember what it is. <laughs> active isolated <laughs> stretching. Activated, <laughs> active isolated stretching. And we talked about it and like, you know what? She's willing to show you some stuff. So I'm gonna let her talk a little bit. She's gonna tell us how long she's been doing this. And she's not, she's not a- Nice massage therapist. No, she's not a nice massage therapist. But she's like above and beyond. She's got certifications beyond certification. So I'm gonna tell her exactly, <laughs> let her tell you exactly who she is, what she does and then she's gonna show us some stretches. Thank you, Denise, yes. Um, yeah, this started with your post, people saying that they don't exercise because they have pain, and the issue is really weak muscles cause pain. Pain takes the path of least resistance, and weak muscles are not very resistant. So if you were able to strengthen, you can be out of pain. Um, as Denise said, I'm Danielle. I'm Danielle Portinga. I own Essentially Massage. I've owned it for 12, uh, 10 years. I've been a therapist for 13 uh, certifications in orthopedic massage, myoskeletal alignment, as well as training in active isolate stretching. Uh, the point with uh, active isolated stretching is that it's a focus on a specific muscle, not a muscle group, but an individual muscle that could be causing pain, restriction, and joint discomfort. Um, so we were discussing what, how I could explain this. And as many of you know, yoga has been kind of the gold standard of stretching for years. If you're in the Blaine area, there's how many yoga studios? <laughs> yes. So I can think of four right now, just in our community that have yoga. Um, the basis of yoga is static stretching. Static stretching is a stretch that you hold for 30 seconds up to two minutes, such as like a warrior pose, um, you know, downward facing dog. You're, you're holding a pose for an extended period of time. I don't go a week without having a client come in saying, I have discomfort, I have pain, but I keep doing yoga stretchers. So I'll have them show me what stretches they're doing um, like their knees hurt, so they're doing like a pigeon pose. Well, that kind of puts your joint in a compromised position, so that's not necessarily going to decrease your joint pain. And if you're holding that stretch for longer than 30 seconds, you're not going to continue to get a good stretch. You have, I always forget the name of this, it's super easy though. You have a protective stretch response. So. Like if you go to touch a hot stove, your body will pull away because it's hot. Your body learns, don't do that again, it hurts. The pre protective stretch response is the same thing. So if you're you know, in warrior one position, I'll do it that way, <laughs> I don't do yoga much anymore. But if you're in that position for like a minute, your muscles start to shake, they quiver, and that pain can increase. You might start to feel pain. That's the protective stretch response. Your body's saying, that's enough, Stop. Um, if you have over tight muscles, that means that they're shortened. Oh gosh, I should have grabbed my stretch out strap so that you could, <laughs> I could use it like a muscle. Um, so basically, if you think of your muscle as a rubber band, you're going to take that rubber band and stretch it out. Let's say you were to pour some water on that rubber band water is going to just beat right off of it. It's not going to stay. If your muscle is like that rubber band and it's overstretched and weak, it's not going to absorb water, it's not gonna absorb nutrients, it's going to collect toxins, which would be ATP. Bad. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> so 
it's going to collect ATP, it's going to collect calcium deposits, um, and create fibrotic issues, such as we, we work with our fascia. So um, that's when you feel knots, that's that fascia. So we want your muscles to be the correct length and plump. <laughs> so, I like the word plump muscles mean plump. definition, I'm sure. Right? Yes, Oops. yes. Not okay. it, plump muscles, so <laughs> not plumpness, um, but that just means that they're going to be more nutrient rich, they're going to be more healthy, and you're going to have fewer injuries. Is that kind of a, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm explaining things that are, so or if I'm just chatting. So with this <laughs> AIS stretching, right. okay, I hear the word stretching, so I go right to yoga. So right. are we shortening then instead of lengthening? So what we're doing is we're taking a shortened, tight muscle and we're specifically stretching it for two seconds. Two, two seconds. seconds. Okay. That's all. Okay. That bypasses that stretch reflex response to keep our muscles from tearing. Okay. So we are going to re-educate the muscle. So like, let's say you have, well, I'll use my, my tricep area. So you'll see people at the gym and they're doing this and they're yanking on things and they're holding it for a long time or they're going into a wall and they're bouncing into it. That's actually taking the muscle fibers and it's tearing them apart. When you do that, you have collagen fibers that are thrown into it. Now, if you were to take and do a stretch like this where you just turn one, two, come back and drop your arm. You're doing two things at once. You're strengthening because you're raising your arm and you're holding it for two seconds, one, two, just to the point of discomfort. Hmm. If you feel pain, if you feel pain from a stretch, stop. You're now, <laughs> no, cut it out. <laughs> um, that means that you're actually creating scar tissue. So stop doing that. When you create scar tissue, it creates layering and layering and layering. It's like a spitball. So we don't want our, our fibers to start doing all this jumbled mess. So yes, active isolated stretching is two seconds up to 10 times of okay. repetition. That was gonna be my next question. Right. If you have chronic pain, you can do it multiple times throughout the day. So you, you know, it's just not like, if you're an engineer, because I have this issue with engineers, if I say 10 times, that means 10 times. <laughs> not 100, 10 is good enough. That is perfect. And is that 10 times, say three times a day, or is that three, three, and three? You could do it, Nope, it, you can do it 10 times, give your body a break. So the, the nice thing with the active isolated stretching is that you're gradually increasing the length of the muscle in a safe way. So let's say in the morning you wake up, if you have a lot of people our age have plantar fasciitis. So in the morning, I would recommend do your stretches before you get out of bed. And that's the nice thing about the active isolated stretching is the focus is to have it be non-weight bearing. That takes, that takes, ooh, I'm popping. Um, <laughs> that takes gravity out of the equation and that takes pressure off of the joint. So you're actually stretching the muscle versus putting the joint in a potentially compromised position. Um, so if you do the stretches in the morning and then you go and exercise, you can do the stretches after so it could or be before, 10 in the morning and 10, 10 after. in the afternoon, okay. and then 10 before you go to bed. Because that way, you know, when you're sleeping, you know, if people are sleeping and their feet are pushed, you know, flat like this, because if you lay on your back, your covers are gonna push your toes forward. So that's actually shortening the gastroc muscles. So the lower leg muscles, when you do this, the muscles become shortened and tight. Um, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, if you do the stretches before you go to bed, then you don't have to worry so much in the morning and your muscles are going to co continue to get nutrients that they need throughout the night. Okay. Decreasing the potential of injury later in the day. Okay. So lots of my people are knee things, knee, knee, knee. Mm -hmm. So knee pain you're telling mm -hmm. us is muscle it's weakness somewhere. Muscle weakness, yes. Um, so what are a couple of 
stretches for the knee to right. help relieve pain. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. We all have heard of the runner stretch. This one? That one. So what you're doing there ends up putting your back in a uncompromised position. So what I recommend to people is that they take a chair. We're gonna stretch out the quadratus. No, this Quad. is not, oh my gosh. I was gonna say <laughs> quadratus lumborum. Oh, <laughs> quadricep muscles. So a lot of people say that they have IT pain. Our IT band, you cannot actually stretch it. Yeah, you just have to foam roll the heck out of it, right? No, no, okay, no. Let's hear it. it is basically, it is the same strength as steel. So you can't actually stretch your IT band. You're actually trying to focus on stretching the muscles that are below it. Underneath it? Underneath it, yeah. Okay. So your vastus lateralis. Okay. This muscle, it goes from your hip bone right here, down and around. So you see like right here on this line, that's where your IT band is. So that's why people say it's IT band pain. Okay. But to stretch your knees, you're going to take get into kind of a runner stretch. Again, this is a non-weight bearing stretch. Okay. As you see, I'm putting the weight on my right leg, I'm taking my left leg, mm -hmm. and instead of going like this, where you have a gap between your knees, you're going to bring your knees together hmm. and squeeze your butt cheeks. So okay. again, this is what it would look like. I'm not compromising my back and doing that. That doesn't mm -hmm. deepen the stretch, that just puts you in a compromised position to create low back pain. So is it, so show us like three. Okay, so basically take your leg, bend at the knee, if you can do this, there is an alternative. So you are going to take your, your foot in your hand, bring your knees together, and then squeeze your glutes. Let go, and do it again. One, two. So as you increase and do this multiple times, the stretch, you're not gonna feel it as deeply. Which that's is what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. Okay. So it's kind of counterintuitive. Yes. Not what we've been taught for sure. <laughs> not what we've been taught. So what would is there another one for people who can't get this up quite that? Yes, and I'm trying to think of how I can do that right here. Would it normally be on the floor? It would be. Okay, I'm gonna lift it up, guys. Okay, we'll do our best. All right. <laughs> so let's see here. I will lay on my because I do have issues with my right, my left knee. So you would just lay on your side <laughs> and take your leg or your foot in your hand, pull backwards, and then bring your knees towards each other. One, two. So your knees aren't stacked right on top of another on this one. Okay. Nope because you're in a different position. One, two. So, okay, would this be an opportunity to use a strap for someone who cannot get their yes. foot up there? Should I go grab my straps? Yes, Okay. I think we should, because I, I, so. I see a lot of people who can't do that. <laughs> We're gonna get for a or second me. to do that. Yeah. For better better video, for better ideas, right? For safety purposes. Um, if you guys have any questions while we're doing this video, be sure that you pop them in the comments. I don't know if I can see them. I don't, whatever. But if we don't catch them, we'll come back and answer them when we're done with the video. Or if you want to pop them in, if you're watching the replay, hashtag replay, let us know if you love it. And if you have any questions, put them in here. I'll circle back later and get them. And if they're, and they're going to be for Danielle, I know it. I'll make sure she sees them and that she comes back in and answers them, okay? All right. All right, so. Are you going back here, on the floor? No. Sure, I probably will. Okay. So this is a stretch out strap. It's made of nylon. Okay, so it's not a stretch. It does not stretch at all. So a lot of people are like, oh, I can't find one of those. Well, do you have a dog? <laughs> Use your dog leash. They're made of nylon. That's awesome idea. You know, I'm 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 Scottish. I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Make use of what you have. So if you do not have a dog leash or a stretch out strap, if you have a yoga strap, those are typically made of nylon or hard material that does not stretch. Mm -hmm. The goal is we don't want stretch like this. This is not going to be effective for stretching. This is for strengthening. So no PT bands. Nope. Okay. That's for strengthening. Okay. So if you if 
you know, I found one at um, Five Below for three dollars. So, okay. you know, if you want, you can order these online. They're about fifteen dollars. Um, these green ones, they have loops throughout so that you can actually have a better grip. Okay. So for someone to stretch their quadricep muscles. All right. Oh, on the floor. Okay. Good thing I'm flexible. Exactly. So you're going to take and put it around your ankle. Hmm. Bring it around. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and you're going to put it under your head. So then what you're going to do is just this. And to add a little extra stretch to this, hmm. you would want to try and straighten your leg and hold it for one, two. So you're attempting to straighten your leg while you Right, so I'm going reverse. to extend at the knee. So is this the stretch position or the other one? Is the this stretch? is a different version. There's several okay. different versions that you can stretch your hips okay. and your quadricep muscles. So this one is more active, the isolated stretching. But so you're going to have your foot here, your arms, it's very tight. So what I'm going to do is just try and straighten my leg. One, two. Bring my knee back down. Again, and I'm going to extend at the knee. One, two. So I'm just going to feel a gentle stretch from the top of my knee to the top of my hip right here because that's where the quadricep muscles go. If you feel that um, you're going to roll backwards, you know, some people are like doing this, that's not going to give you a stretch. Or they roll way forward, and they're not going to get that unless they go here. So okay. <laughs> again, this is a good one for if someone has knee injuries, uh, like their bursa sac is swollen, they can put a towel behind their knee for protection. Okay. So they can just do this. And here you might be able to see a little bit better that I'm going to just try and straighten my at my knee. One, two, and relax. Bend, push, one. And you're pushing two. your toes away from your head. I'm just trying to extend my knee. Okay. So this is, this is extension. This is contraction. So and I see you're flexing your foot at the top. Is that? Yes, that, okay. can, that can give you a deeper stretch. One, two. So when you, it, it changes the muscle fibers. If my foot is here, like that, and I try and stretch, I'm not gonna feel it very well. Okay. If I do it like this, have my foot flexed, now I feel it. Okay, so guys, so it's a, all that's important too. This, bad, this, good. Okay. Okay, so those are um, when people have knee pain, joint issues, it's about um, creating space in the joint. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> so I know, I say that too. I'm yeah, a doctor. I'm not I just a doctor. Know a lot of stuff. Right, so unfortunately, physicians aren't going to be experts in muscle. That's mm -hmm. not their main focus. Right. Their main focus is internal. Mm -hmm. So if you're sick, you have a cold, you have a virus, you have a broken bone, they're the people to see. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Don't come to us if you have a broken bone. Sorry, they're, they're putting a new back door in. <laughs> cool. So, okay, another... My knee feels a lot better. Well, there you go. See? It feels better. Gentle Shoulder. Stretches. Shoulder stuff. Shoulders. Okay, so in our society, <laughs> everybody's shoulders are rolled forward, which means your head goes forward, which creates neck pain, shoulder pain, everything else. Um, one of my least favorite products that's sold out there is that hook with the ball at the end because they're you're massaging your back where it hurts and that's not the problem i apologize for the noise <laughs> you're still getting something yeah, you're getting something. it's free just you know be happy good um so what i recommend to people is there's some simple exercises especially now that a lot of people are working from home they are working from their kitchen tables they're working from their beds they're working from their couches you're all in contracted <laughs> posture. So everything in the front is getting shortened and weak. So those stretches that we just did with the quads, that's actually really good for your shoulders as well. Um, for shoulders, for people that are just starting out stretching, I just recommend, you know, do this, then open. You're just bringing your arms up and open. And then you're going up a few more degrees 
And I see you're not clapping back if you're going down and around. Is that yes. on purpose? It's on purpose because our shoulders have circumduction, which is a full range of motion, whereas this is a hinge joint. We we can't do a whole lot more than just flex at the elbow. It doesn't mm -hmm. do a ton. It's, it's a hinge joint. So our shoulder can do this. It should do this. It should have all these ranges of motion. So if you're doing that, you're kind of hitting all the muscles. Face the camera directly okay. and show us, are you going up in a Y motion? Or are you going I'm, straight out? Eventually. So at first I'm just going along the horizontal plane. Okay. And then as high as you can. So kind of each one go up a mm -hmm. little bit higher and wider. Right. And circle back down around. Right. So that you're getting engagement of all of the muscles. Oh, that's exhausting. <laughs> I know, right? It's amazing that it's stretching like, can be such right, it, it's, a workout. It's a workout. And that's the nice thing with the active isolated stretching is that it is engaging muscles to do an activity versus only stretching. And that's kind of why I tell people that have joint injuries to stop doing yoga. I'm sorry, stop doing yoga. Um, <laughs> it's worth trying something new, guys. It is. Doing the same thing over and over is yeah. the definition of insanity. So, oh, try something yeah. new. I was going to say progress. <laughs> <laughs> no, insanity. Uh, insanity. If it's not working, <laughs> insanity. If it's working, hmm, carry Keep on. Going. Progression. Yeah. So, that's one really good, great stretch. Um, another one, you guys will love this. So, these muscles here in our neck that cause this. No, I wish yeah, I knew how okay. I, I get those things yeah. too. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm like, this is my big thing lately. I know. Look at this. My jaw has done but weird things. They sell tape. <laughs> to tape? Scratch tape? <laughs> <laughs> Does it work? Because if it works, I'm like, yeah, yeah. it's like makeup tape. <laughs> makeup like, tape? Yeah, I'll show you. I'll okay. ask my daughter. It's like a big South Korean video. Relates to it. Anyway, okay, um, sorry. no, sorry. What were you gonna do? We digress. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're when you have that forward head posture, it's it's actually shortening and tightening these muscles here in your neck. So we want to straighten them and also get them to relax. So you're going to pretend that your head. I'm kind of gross. Pretend your head is on a platter. <laughs> Happy Halloween! Yeah, <laughs> spooky. <laughs> and you're just going to take that platter and push it on a table. So you're just going to go like that and hold it for two seconds and relax. Relax, not stick forward? No, you just relax. Okay. We don't want to keep doing that. Right. We're not chickens. <laughs> so <laughs> just want to be clear here. Yes, so we just push back. One, two. And is this like, like how many chins can you cause? Yeah. It is. It's okay. like, what would I look like with a turtleneck? Um, okay. You can also use your this strap here if you don't feel that you're able to do it. And just pull, push back. One, two, and relax. One, two, relax. So she's not yanking on that with her hand, guys. She's just it holding way. it. One, two, relax. It's not a big movement because our atlas and axis don't have as much range of motion like as a other glide. Yes, they just glide. So that's why we're doing that. Um, and then another one is kind of what I did before. You just find like a door or a corner. I'm going to show this. Sorry. <laughs> so my fingers, you do this where it doesn't hurt. Okay. So if it hurts to have your arm up this high, don't do that yet. You can start down here. And what we're doing is we're going to stretch pectoralis muscles, the major and the minor. Mm -hmm. So you just put your fingers here, the fingertips. You have, pretend that your fingers, your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder are one solid plank. There's no movement. Really? She's tooting up a storm, guys. <laughs> we <laughs> had Brussels sprouts nice. like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. So basically, I have my fingers just on the door, and I'm turning my body from one, two, come back. With the lower you are, the more engaging it's going to be in the bicep area. As you move up, you're going to get more of the pectoralis muscles. So one, two, I've held it too long. Mm -hmm. And then you go back, one, two. See how much different that is than what mm -hmm. we've, you know, oh, yeah. old school stuff where you're like, your palm is like this, 
you're leaning into it, you're actually engaging too many muscles. So this is very specific to one muscle, not, not many. Okay. So is there any body parts that you thought I should have asked about that we didn't or? Um, oh, I got one, I got one. Um, uh -huh. Low back, L4, L5, mm -hmm. fusion, got anything for that? Yes, so many people don't think of their hamstring muscles when they think low back pain. Your hamstring muscles, if I had like a diagram, attach to your sits bones. If those are short and tight, it's going to cause your, your back to go like this, which is going to compress those discs. Okay. It doesn't have to be as exaggerated as what I was just doing, but you can stretch your hamstrings. That's a really good thing because once those are released, you can actually focus on strengthening the gluteal area, which will help support the low back. So, so how would I do that hamstring stretch? There's a few different ways. Okay. <laughs> We're kind of making this sound like we practiced. <laughs> I know, right? But this, no, I, this question came up last week. Okay. So, so as I had said before, we want to try and do stretches that are non-weight bearing. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a pinch, and again, if you're sitting at your desk a lot, you can do this at the office or at home. So you're going to kind of, I'm trying to think of what the best way to do it. I'll do it a few different ways. Okay. So like if you lean this hip forward and go down. Which one am I stretching? Which side am I stretching? I'm stretching the left side. Okay. So I'm putting the weight, my body weight, into my right leg. My heel is planted on the floor. I'm not leaning up. I'm not going onto my tiptoes. My heel is pushed into the floor. So I'm leaning down one, two, one, two. So now I'm stretching my right side. And your feet are pretty close together. Yeah, my feet are just hip width distance apart. Straight down. Okay. okay. So I'll do it sideways here. So you're going one, two. Oops, I have to put them together. So you put them together. What? <laughs> I'm switching it up. One, two, one, two, one, two. To deepen the stretch, then you'll go like this. You're bringing your elbow down to your knee. Mm, okay. And then I forgot what I was doing. So kind of the inside of your yep inside elbow to the inside of your knee. To make it even deeper, we're oh, going oh, to yeah. now go like this. One, two. One, two. One. Two. If you want to increase it or build upon it, you can then do this. And so you bring it adding your shoulder step to it, or is yep. that still straight up? Just this is hamstrings. what it's doing is it's actually catching part of the quadratus lumborum, which is next to that L4, L5. Okay. So you're doing that. Okay. Another stretch for the low back, that QL area, mm -hmm. that's next to that fusion. Mm -hmm. and this is still safe. If somebody's had a fusion, these are safe. Okay. So let's say that I wanna stretch my left QL. I'm gonna take my left leg over my right, raise my right arm up, and lean to my right. Most of us, I mean, now I felt that in my right side. Well, what you're feeling, well, yeah, because you're doing it on your right side. You're, oh, oh, you're doing it backwards. <laughs> nope. Try it. Take your left. Okay. Okay. Shadow me. Okay. Mirror me. Right leg over left. Okay. Right arm up. And then you're just going to kind of push your right hip out to the right. And the weight is on my left foot in that. Correct. The back one. Okay. So you can see we're, again, it's non-weight bearing for the muscle that we're stretching. It feels so good. I want to stay here. And then I'm like, no, no, she said two. She said two. One, two. Ten, two seconds. One, two. One, yep. two, one, two. If okay. you were doing yoga, that would be fine. Okay. So if you're, and I'm not against yoga. So I... you know who you are, Mrs. L45S1. <laughs> but I might tag you in it later. Uh... <laughs> and you know why. Right. But... So there are a few other ways to stretch the hamstring muscles there on the floor. Um, 
let's save that for another, another day. day. We're at a half okay. hour now. Yes. So if you found this helpful, I'd love a thumbs up sometime if you're catching the replay. If you try some of these at home, report back, let us know. And if you need Danielle's contact information, I tagged her in the thing. She's local to Blaine, Minnesota, but I'm sure she can help you some way, shape or form. Okay? Yeah, I can try. So thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye guys.